Chris and that. <laughs> And welcome back for another episode where today we're going to be showing you guys what wheels we've bought for the car but before we do that let's have a quick look at what happened previously so previously we had a bit of an engine with the issue long story short we had a bent valve that we had to fix we removed the cylinder head we had it faced and we installed a brand new metal head gasket and some ARP head studs slapped it all back together and there was no more ticking noise coming from the cylinder head, which means it was a successful mission. So I did finish the previous episode off with the car and the dyno, which was supposed to be this episode. It was a bit of a teaser, but change of plans. We're talking about the wheels, the rims, the tires, the ride height, the wheel alignment, and finally, we're gonna do a bit of a burnout at the end of the video. Uh, the car has been tuned, but I did purchase the wheels before the car ever went on the dyno. And if I post the dyno video with the wheels on the car, People are gonna start asking specs in the comments, so I might as well just get out of the way, talk about everything in this video, and then the dyno video can be in the next one, but we're still doing a burnout at the end of this one, so hopefully the viewers are still gonna be entertained. Let's have a look at what wheels we got. Alrighty, so these are the wheels, and they are not real TE37s, they are actually rotor grids, and I wasn't really prepared to spend three and a half to four thousand dollars in real TE37s. Of course, they would fit the car a little bit better, um, to those with a very keen eye, they're definitely going to be able to tell the difference straight away between rotors and real TE37s. But as you guys know, we are trying to build this car on a bit of a budget, which has raised a bit of a discussion in the comments section. Uh, people are saying as we progress throughout the build that this is not a budget build anymore, that it's gone way overboard and stuff. But I can promise you, if you jump on Gumtree, jump on Facebook, have a look at prices of running and driving stock or mile, you know, slightly modified R34 GTTs, you're probably gonna get a very close figure to what this car owes me so far. And this is pretty much a fully restored shell that's been converted to look like a GTR. So we are still definitely within budget. I've been looking for a fair few months now to see if anything's gonna pop up for a good deal. Nothing's been really coming up for sale. Prices just keep rising. So I sort of had to settle for a set of rotors and to be honest, I'm very happy with, um, with the purchase. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about the wheel specs, the wheel size, the tires, where I got them from, and how a GTT might be wider than a GTR. So, rotor grids, 18 by 10, plus 15 on all four corners. I know it's gonna be a commonly asked question on my Instagram, so please just watch this video. I'm gonna explain everything. So, 18 by 10, plus 15 all around, all four corners. Then we have Federal ST1 tires in a 285, 35, 18, again, on all four corners. The wheels were supplied and fitted by Central Tires. It's a local business. I pretty much walked in there, had a chat to Ryan, and I was like, look, I need some tires, some wheels that won't break the bank. Obviously, if I ever decide to sell the rims one day, the tires are reusable, because they are really good tires. They've got a nice, chunky sidewall. They really do make um, make the car look good and one more thing I really recommend if you're looking for good deals no matter what shop you want to go to walk in there be polite have a chat to them if people see that you're passionate about what you want to do nine times out of ten they're gonna to want to help you out in some form either getting the parts sooner or providing discounts or whatever it may be Ryan really looked after me he picked all the wheels up the tires were there he fitted and balanced everything for me and then he also said that they're gonna get a new wheel alignment machine in. So that was perfect. Literally, wheels, tires, alignment from one shop. Couldn't have asked for anything more.
as you guys know, it did come off the rotisserie. All the subframes were pulled out, all the arms, all the bushings, everything's been replaced. So the car definitely does need an alignment and we're gonna have a look at the old spec sheet and the old spec sheet was totally out of whack. So Zach is fixing everything right now. It's a GT. GTT, real drive. We've just finished the uh, alignment on the 34. We've set it up now, and as you can see, but the before and after, there's a bit more in depth where we've gone towards the factory specifications, more or less towards uh, Damo's driving style and what he's gonna be doing. As you guys have seen before, we've also aligned the S15, Danny's S15, and we've set that up a little bit more aggressively just for his driving, where Damo is a little bit more conservative. Uh, he's gonna be driving more or less on the road. I'm sure he'll talk to you about that in his videos. It was a little bit out, now it's all good to go and It is raining outside, so apologies if there is any background noise, but I'm pretty sure for most people this is slowly approaching the end of another episode. We've covered a fair few topics and I even did a bit of a skid towards the end of the video. Hopefully it's been entertaining uh, seeing the car run for once. The next video should be even better because it is the dyno video finally. I'm pretty sure most people have patiently been waiting for that one. So yeah, give us a thumbs up if you like this sort of content. Uh, leave a comment if you don't like it or even if you do like it what we can improve on as always uh, I am going to continue this video for another couple of minutes to talk about some other nerdy skyline topics um, that some might enjoy but as I said for most this will be the end and we'll see you soon okay so now I'm gonna talk about the width of the car I've mentioned it before I know there's a lot of new people to the channel and they still think that this is a real GTR this is a GTT meaning the car looks like a GTR, but the chassis, all the suspension is still a rear wheel drive GTT. So the R34 GTR is 10 millimeters narrower than the GTT. I know that doesn't really make sense. You'd think it's wider, but it's not. The GTT is 10 millimeters wider per side. So 10 mil wider on this side and 10 mil wider on the other side. So when you're picking wheels, you actually have to pick a little bit narrower wheel to fit the guards. If I 
ran the 18 by 10 and a half plus 15 like every other GTR, these wheels would come out a little bit further and they'd be well past the guards. Now another consideration for you R34 GTT owners that are converting your cars to look like GTRs is that the Z-Tune guards are a little bit wider than the GTR aluminium guards. So if, you're just, so if you've decided that you don't like the look of the Z-Tune guards and you want to run the aluminium guards or aluminium, you're going to have to get a front wheel that is narrower, something like a 18 by 9.5 plus 22. That should fit it really well. You can still fit a 285 on a 9.5 inch rim. It's just something to look out for. While the back, we have no clearance issues between the other side being the rim and the inner arch. The rear guards have been rolled. Um, absolutely no problems in the back whatsoever. The front is a bit of a concern. The next video is gonna be a dyno video and you're gonna see that the car is really slammed on the ground because that, feel, that video was filmed prior to this one. So I actually had to raise the car for a few reasons. Reason number one is I want more ground clearance. I'm planning on driving this car through parts of Australia where I really think I'm gonna need a little bit more ground clearance. But thankfully, Nissan are absolutely legendary and they, this is the best car Nissan ever built, let's be honest. Um, they've, they've thought of everything. This car, the rails are very far off the ground. I reckon we've got 150 mil, mil between the ground and the chassis rail, maybe more. And once you put all these extension lips on, the car still looks like it's freaking low. Thing that sort of goes like that and if I measured the distance between the ground and the bottom of the lip we've probably only got 120 mil which means the car looks freaking sick looks like it's low but it's still fully functional the exhaust shouldn't hit anything the chassis rail shouldn't hit anything if we rip something off we're gonna rip off a freaking extension which I sort of look as consumables anyways so the actual ride height we've got about uh, just just above sort of like two and a bit fingers on the front and the back. Now the biggest concern I had with the front is once the suspension compresses, that the, the tire is actually gonna hit the guard. Now on the back, it's not that big of a problem. You scrape a little bit of paint off and there's no worries. While these fiberglass guards, if you freaking hit them, you're gonna shatter them, you're gonna break them. They're gonna have to get repaired, sometimes even replaced. So I just wanted to make sure that we're gonna have no contact between the tire and the uh, guard.